in this video, we go from this to this. The main thing that we ran into when designing this closet was the left side is deeper than the right side. So we chose to center our middle piece in the center of this doorway. So when the doors are open, it'll look like it's centered in the closet. This setup makes it really easy to break down these full sheets of plywood. I'm using some foam insulation on the bottom so I can cut through this without obviously cutting into the concrete. And then using my track saw, uh, which you can use a circular saw and a straight edge also. That's what I used to do. And I need to, I need four pieces uh, that are 41 inches long. So I need to cut across them. So rather than cutting four individual cuts, I'm going to do two cuts. Using this insulation, these pieces don't move around. So I literally just slid them together and the edges are perfectly lined up and I will mark them across and I'll make one cut instead of two individual cuts. All right, so I'm back upstairs in the nursery. I've got all the pieces cut down and uh, all the major pieces. I still have to cut the shelves, but before we do that, we want to get the whole thing assembled and then we'll cut the shelves to make sure we got our, the sizing correct. So all the these vertical pieces are going to have uh, adjustable shelf peg holes drilled in them and we're going to use this adjustable shelf jig to do that. makes it super easy and then we'll get assembling. So we started putting the pieces to the closet and realized that we kind of have a design flaw. Right now everything is 15 inches and we're going to take it down to 13. It'll give us a narrower shelf, but we'll more than make up for it when it comes to these four corner spaces um, and accessibility. So when deciding what side and where to take the two inches off, to make them 13 inches. We decided to take them off the front. That means we have to re-drill all the adjustable shelf holes, but that was a lot easier than trying to use the jigsaw to recut around the trim or take an inch off each side. And so we had to do a few calculations because remember um, this side is not as deep as this side, um, but we're gonna center it on this opening. So we're 29 and 5 eighths from this left-hand wall to this uh, side. Got it that time. Oh, sorry, say that again. I nailed that. Okay. All right, to level the ends, um, our plywood's got a little bit of a bend in it. So what we do is we put a level on the top here to make sure we're level. And then we've got a smaller level here to make sure we're level from front to back also. Okay, so now we're to the point of adding all the finishing touches to this built out carcass. So making our own face frames or trim um, is a way to finish this plywood edge. So obviously this plywood edge is unsightly and that is part of using plywood. You could do a couple different things depending on how you're gonna finish it. We're gonna paint all this. Um, so we, you could use edge banding. You can make your own trim like this just by cutting down some pine. You can also use wood filler or some spackling and uh, sand, or fill it in and sand it 
and paint it. I've had good results doing that also. So we've already started adding the trim here and we're using a technique that I have not used before, but I've seen it done. The technique that we're gonna use is we're gonna glue them on with some wood glue and blue tape. The blue tape is gonna act as our clamp and that will allow us to clamp the pieces on. Because we used half inch plywood, I was worried about nailing through these faces. Uh, getting them to fasten. There's just not much to grab onto here. So that's one downside of using half inch ply and not three quarter inch ply. So we cut our wood strips for the face frame at three quarters of an inch because we want a little bit of an overhang um, and it just covers up any imperfections while they dry. That was my first time using blue tape as a clamp and it seemed to work effectively well. We will have to go back and touch up the edges with the sander, but other than that, it is ready to paint. The last thing we need to do for this renovation is update the bifold doors that go on the front. Now these are just kind of the old standard bifold doors. Uh, we painted them a couple years ago, uh, but we're gonna take it a step further this time. Rather than just putting them back on, we're going to update them with a chevron uh, uh, wood layout. All right, so we just finished putting the outside border on. So we've got a two inch uh, border right here. We've got a two one inch borders right here. And the reason we did that is just to clean up the chevron stripes coming in. Um, they're actually gonna go this way. And that way they don't have to line up. Each of these sides don't have to line up. So in order to figure out this distance right here, we're gonna take you back to school high schools for all the kids that said they're not gonna use this math in the real world. I have hired a high school math teacher who is a mathematician to explain this to you. Um, so since we're going for a 45 degree angle, um, technically we're gonna be making a 45, 45, 90 triangle. You can kind of envision it in there. And on a 45, 45, 90, the two legs of this triangle are gonna be exactly the same length. That's how we get the 45s. It's technically what we call an isosceles triangle. Um, and so since this length right here is fixed, we're gonna use that um, as the length of both of the sides. So this comes in at eight and seven eighths. And so if you wanna know the length of this one, it'll be exactly the same, eight and seven eighths. And we can mark that here so we know exactly where it will line up. Now, if you want the hypotenuse, you can try, right, to try to measure, make sure you hit your angles right. Um, or you can actually use the Pythagorean theorem um, to help you because it is a 90 uh, degree triangle, it's a right triangle. And so it'll be this side squared plus this side squared will equal your hypotenuse squared. Um, and so that's actually true, like if you were doing, you know, you wanted a 30 degree angle or a 60 degree angle, you can use that Pythagorean theorem to help you um, find those sides. Um, but on a 45, 45, 90, there is a little bit of a trick. Um, whatever this side is, uh, same as this side, and the hypotenuse is always that side times the square root of two. So a simple calculation you can do is type in um, eight and seven eighths, which we have to convert the seven eighths first and that as a decimal is 0.875. And so just take that value and times it by the square root of two. And that is the length of your hypotenuse. And so you could see if we, you know, try to line this up here and here, um, we're at just over 12 and a half. And that's how we get just over 12 and a half inches. So we completed the doors, we've got them painted, installed, 
we ran into a problem. Problem we're running into is when you go, when you get these, these doors in there um, where they're supposed to be so they fit in the opening, they won't open. They stop because this half inch of material uh, increased that, that radius that the door has to take. So our fix is, I'm gonna take it back downstairs. I'm gonna use a chamfer with the palm router. And by knocking off that edge, it should give us enough clearance to where these doors can rotate so they can close properly. We'll see if this works. So the chamfer I was talking about, you can't even tell right here. We've already painted it, but this edge right here is at a 45 degree angle. And now it does not hit on anything. This project gave us a lot of ups and downs. It was kind of a roller coaster ride, trying to figure everything out. But I couldn't be happier with the way that it came out. I have a lot of other projects just like this one that I think you'll like. You can check those out right here. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.